Some people say he was always here. The Batman. Vengeance. Defender of the weak. Destroyer of the wicked. Some people don't even believe in him. Others will say they saw him, or have proof that he exists. The more religious people here in Gotham say he's an angel, sent by God to protect us. Others will say he's a demon, sent out to punish the evildoers in the streets. Others say he's a vampire, and that he drinks the blood of his victims. I used to be one of those non-believers. I thought he was just a myth, a legend, a story told by parents to comfort their children, a way of giving them hope for the future, but he couldn't be real. I'm pretty skeptical of everything. If there's no solid, tangible evidence, it wasn't real. The same goes for the legendary Batman. There's no pictures of him online, only word of mouth, and that wasn't good enough for me. Until that one day. I go to Carleton High School, that big, modern school way past Wayne Tower. It's huge, and it's new. Only built last year, shortly after the other high school went up in flames for mysterious reasons. The day was usual, cloudy and dreary, lots of birds, traffic, and people yelling. Some rioting here and there. I walked nonchalantly past all of it, as any Gotham citizen is trained at birth to do. Violence is just an everyday routine in this city. The school is kind of secluded. It's got a lot of shrubbery and stuff that makes it blend in, plus it's close to a road barely anyone ever uses. Except the buses, I guess. I walked through the reinforced glass doors that made up the grand entrance to Carlton, and I walk through the white concrete hallways towards the lunchroom, which is where me and my friends usually hang out till school starts. I entered, scanned the room for any friends who were there at the time. Nobody was. And seeing this, I plopped myself down at a table, took out my cell phone, and did what I always did at the beginning of the day. Look at the news. I know, I know. Not what you'd expect some 16-year-old girl to do with her phone in her downtime, but I'm different than other kids, I guess. Dad said so. I want to be a reporter someday, so why not catch up on the news now? Gotham News is, as they do every day, streaming live on YouTube. So I click on the app. I click on the live stream, and instantly I'm greeted with the stubbled, cleft-chinned face of Bruce Wayne. That's a rarity. Usually he's in bed or otherwise just doesn't show up to comment. Barely anybody ever sees him outside. He's a pretty good looking guy all around in a dark, tragic sort of way. He's got this big, dark chocolate colored head of slicked hair, these deep blue eyes that could bore a hole into your skull. Today, on top of his usual black suit, he was wearing a pale blue overcoat. Even though he always makes himself look healthy, well kept, and presentable, you can see through his disguise. Poor guy. He had bags under his eyes, like he hadn't slept in days, and his face was very pale, as if he didn't go outside all that often, which he didn't. You could almost feel sorry for him as a dozen microphones were being pressed into his face. Mr. Wayne, what do you think of the crime here in Gotham? What do you think can combat it? One reporter, Vicky Vale, asked. Wayne looked tiredly at her, smiling in a fake, awkward way, and answered in a smooth, low voice. The crime situation is... terrible. I think that could be a result of the unemployment issue here, because so many people are... Um, um, <coughs> so many people here are desperate for money. He smiled awkwardly again. His gaze, sh his gaze shifted a lot, zooming across every surface in front of him. Vicky smiled at the camera and gave it a look that said, I'm talking to Bruce Wayne. The Bruce Wayne. She stuck her mic closer to Wayne's face and said breathlessly, Thank you, Bruce. So relating to my other question, what do you think of the masked vigilante who people say roams the streets at night? Bruce's gaze hardened. Very slightly. He could see the corners of his mouth tighten. 
Well, he sighed, looking to the sky. I, um, I don't know. I guess some lunatic in spandex fighting crime is pretty normal compared to what happens in the city. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no, no comment. It was at this moment that the bell rung, loudly reminding me to jet the heck out of the lunchroom. Closed YouTube down, pocketed my phone, and went to first period. The rest of the day, the school day, continued as normal. Useless knowledge, useless knowledge, lunch, and so on and so forth. So, at exactly 2.45, school was let out, and as you might suspect, I packed up all my stuff into my backpack and left. It was beginning to darken outside. Gray, menacing clouds appeared, covering the heavens, and rain tinkled down. I walked down the street to the apartment where I lived with my dad and kid brother. Tall, plain buildings towered over me as I watched, casting shadows all over Gotham. Not many people were out right now, which was weird for a city this size. I walked past a filthy, run-down brick alleyway. That place had always scared me. It was unbelievable how many drug deals, muggings, and murders you could see happen in one place. I sort of jogged past the alleyway, trying to be fast and quiet just in case, but... Out of fear, I stopped in my tracks when I heard rustling and heavy male breathing. I was about halfway across the alleyway entrance and tried to slip away, but no such luck. A hand, muscular and wearing fingerless gloves. I, I tried to fight back, but no such luck. He covered my mouth with his hand and forced me into the dark alleyway. There was another man back there. He had a gun on him and was aiming at me. I was shoved against a dull brick wall and was forced around. Both of these goons wore clown masks, aged and chipped. The clothes they were they wore were tattered and filthy. All right, princess, don't scream or Hag here is gonna stab some holes into you. Nobody's here. Nobody here is gonna get hurt. Just give us the backpack, everything in your pockets, and you can go. Shaking, I nodded and dug it in my pockets for any loose change I might have had. The guy called Hank was digging through my backpack, shuffling through p pens and paper. Alright, I need that cell phone too. Hand it over. Without waiting for a response, he shot his hand into my pocket and ripped out my phone. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that, Hank. He said laughing, showing his partner the gadget. No password to wrestle out of her. They laughed together. And speaking of wrestled, me and Gary ought to show you how things work here in Gotham City. Hank said, punching me square in the face. I stumbled over a trash can and hit the hard concrete. Instantly, I felt hard shoes kicking me, beating my sides, my face, my back. A beer... A beer can rolled towards us. Some noise, shrill and so high-pitched you could barely hear it, emanated from the darkness behind us. Gary stopped kicking me and turned around. Who's there? We got guns, pal. So run off before I blow your head off. Silence in return. Was someone else there? Was it a, a, a raccoon or a rat or something? And that's when I heard it. Footsteps. Slow and heavy. The sound echoed off of the tight brick walls. The only thing that could be heard at that moment. I could see somebody coming towards us from the other side of the alleyway. Someone big, far bigger than these two. And then he got closer. Close enough to see the ears, short and stubby, the frame big and powerful, and a cape, or, or were they wings? Gary inhaled sharply. Though his face was covered, it was easy to tell how badly he was scared. Hank was up now, his gun pointed at the figure. I was too hurt and too scared to try to escape. I could only watch as the shape drew near. Stop! Hey! Hey! Stop! I'll shoot! I'll shoot! The stranger did not oblige. So, Hank did what he had threatened and shot. The bullet tinked off of the shadow's chest harmlessly. And the shadow returned the favor. A razor, silvery and bad shaped, flew through the air and hit Hank in the chest. He gasped and fell over defeated. The figure then turned his attention to Gary. 
and it lunged, fast as a leopard about to destroy its prey. In an instant, the thug was being held up by his collar, a foot off of the ground. He was kicking and punching, but was awarded no reaction from his doom. What are you? He yelled, his own tears choking him. What are you? <laughs> and then the shadow spoke, in a deep, rumbling voice I will never forget. There was a fluttering sound, very slight, lots of fluttering sounds, and shrill chirping. The shadow held Gary closer and said to him, in a voice that, a, that could have belonged to an angel of vengeance, I'm Batman. Bats exploded from the alleyway. Big brown creatures, all screaming and fluttering, circled us. There was heat, friction in the air. The Batman drew his clawed fist back and threw it at the criminal's face, sending him flying. That instant, the high-pitched noise stopped, and the bats departed, fluttering through the sky, back to wherever they came from. I was still laying there, in shock, as the Batman walked towards the unconscious criminals. Something on his fist was glowing, burning a bright orange like hellfire. He pressed his fist against each of their necks, hard and firm. He stood up again and faced me. I couldn't see his eyes, but I could feel them checking me, searching for any sort of energy that injury that deserved a trip to the hospital. But then, after a minute of this, he walked backwards, still facing me, back into the shadows he came from. When I was sure he was gone, I turned over to look at Gary, bloodied and bruised. Burnt onto his raw, scorched neck was the symbol of a bat. He had seen vengeance, stared into its hateful, red, cold eyes, and would live on to tell any who would listen that the Batman did indeed rode this, rode this, roam the streets of Gotham and would punish any who would dare harm the innocent. I used to be one of the non-believers. Used to. It's been two years since I first and last saw the Batman, and a lot has happened. Crime stopped for a little bit, then rose again. He can't save everyone. Some people say that Gotham is unsavable. There's too many bad people doing evil to good people. But there's always hope for the future. There has to be. That's why he exists, to fight for us. To protect us from evil men in masks and makeup. Someday, be it tomorrow, a week, or even a century, Gotham will be safe. And the Batman will live on in our hearts and minds forever. <laughs>